Hey guys, Lex here with yet another Elden Ring build video. Sorry I know it's been a while, but as a lot of you know, I have a recent and little human being I have to take care of, so that's, you know, where a lot of my time has been going, understandably. Anyways, in this video we're focusing on the Smith Script weapons. All of them. So because of that, I'm going to go over the different builds that I experimented with. Uh, the first one's a bit of a meme. I figured it'd be funny to have all six of these weapons equipped at once so you could soft swap between them, you know, just throwing different projectiles and ashes of war out on a whim. Uh, and it's perfect since there are six Smith script weapons and six weapon slots. It was honestly really fun just becoming this walking arsenal of all these different weapon types, all with their own throwing styles and different ashes of war. Literally just random bullshit go the build. However, I actually learned a lot from running this build, namely what I think the best Smith script weapons are. Sure, you can throw them all in some way, but but there are some unique mechanics that place some far above the rest, as well as just, you know, better movesets and scalings, etc. So in the latter half of this video, I'll go over what I think are more optimized and real versions of a legit Smith script build, as well as a tier list because one sort of just naturally came about as I was testing everything. Let's get to it. Alright, I'm going to be real with you. The all Smith script weapon build works and is technically viable but it could be better. Biggest issue with this build are, well, you have six weapons equipped and you could probably make better use of that equipment load than having you know all of them sitting there waiting to be soft swapped to, especially if you're already used to hard swapping. This will seem extra silly and pointless. To be fair though, I was impressed that this worked with a relatively low amount of endurance and without Great Jar's arsenal, like all the Smith script weapons for their respective weapon types are on the lighter side as far as weight goes, so that's a slight benefit. However, you do give up a lot of poise for the lighter armor you inevitably have to wear with this build, which is why I decided to go with the Roxasha set since it was around the right weight for this equip load and at least gave you a small boost in damage. We're wearing three pieces here, so we're getting around 6% more physical damage on everything. Ideally, we'd be using more throwing attacks and therefore not getting hit as much, so the armor sets lower resistances and damage absorption might not matter as much in that way. I also went with the Divine Bird Helm for min-max purposes and the stats, you know, if 3 levels in strength and 4 in dex helps a lot. Speaking of stats, I ran this on a strength focused build, as the scaling for all of these weapons tended to favor strength rather than dexterity, and I realized that both the Cirque and Dagger get S scaling and dex when given the keen affinity, but overall I noticed that I only lost around 30ish AR when running strength, since both of these weapons also have strong strength scaling. All the strength based weapons would lose 70 attack rating or more, so it was a bigger penalty to the all weapons build to run it as a dex one. Another important consideration for all of these builds is status buildup because a big advantage of these smith script weapons is, when they're thrown, despite damage fall off of the projectile, the status effect buildup does not fall off and is the same as a melee hit, no matter how far away your target is. Also, it is possible to throw two projectiles with the circ and the dagger, so naturally it made sense to try running frost or bleed with these weapons in particular. So on a whim, I tried out a 50 arcane plus strength build with the all six weapons set up and gave them all blood affinity just to get as much bleed scaling as I could get and I got to say it was pretty effective overall. Bleed goes off very quickly with a lot of these weapons, especially since all of them contribute to bleed build up with that setup, but we'll take a closer look at the stats of all these builds later on. In PvE and PvP, these all weapon builds work better than I thought, but they can definitely be improved. You have access to six different ashes of war, which can catch a lot of players off guard, you know, you have access to a throwing ash of war with the dagger, a thrusting ash of war with the spear, great hammer ashes of war with the great hammer, and so on and so forth. And obviously you can just choose whichever ashes you want to best fit the PvE situations you find yourself in, whether it be a boss fight or progressing through a dungeon. However, I think the most valuable thing to come out of running this meme of a build was honestly what smith script weapons I organically felt like using. At some point I realized I basically had a mental tier list of the weapons I really liked and would gravitate towards more than the others. I'll include this tier list later on, but for now I think it's appropriate that we look at each weapon closely. We have the smith script great hammer, the smith script dagger, the smith script cirque, the smith script axe, the smith script spear, and the smith script shield. We'll start with the Great Hammer. Alright, first up we have the Smith Script Great Hammer, but before we get into the weapon, I quickly just wanted to throw up the spreadsheets I made like a crazy person when recording and comparing damage numbers between all these weapons. Obviously pause the video if you want to see them here, but I'll also link the sheets in the description. I just wanted y'all to understand the sorts of numbers I'm referring to when I go through each build and weapon, so yeah, here they are. I know the notes are a little incomplete sounding, but it was mostly for my personal reference. If you have any questions about any of this, please just leave a comment on the video and I'll get back to you. Anyways, I found that the Great Hammer performed best with strength builds, no big surprise there, it has good strength scaling and is actually one of the best smith script weapons out of the bunch. It gets a good bonus to physical damage when infused as heavy, so that's definitely a strong option. But I also ended up infusing it with frost because the status buildup with these weapons feels strong when coupled in with their throws, as I mentioned earlier, and it doesn't screw up the strength scaling of this weapon. It has the standard great hammer moveset, which is honestly a pretty strong one, pretty fast, decent hyper armor on the swings, all of that. 
However, the Smith script part comes in with the standard heavy attack and the sprinting heavy, both of which involve you hurling the hammer at your target. The standing heavy involves some spins, and you'll spin more on a charged heavy, and all these wind-up hits can hit your target. It seems strong to me at first, but honestly the status effect is reduced on the spin attacks, so it's not as insane as I thought it would be, though it is useful in PvE for knocking down targets out of range when fully charged. And the damage isn't half bad either. It also has a pretty hefty stamina cost attached to it, so be aware of that. However, what is insane is the sprinted two-handed throw attack. I think I've seen a couple of content creators pick up on this peripherally, and I'm not sure if anyone has pointed this out directly yet, but what's insane about the sprinting throw is that if you hit your target at point blank, both a melee swing and the following projectile will hit at the same time, resulting in a double hit and a ton of status buildup. I first picked up on this when comparing damage numbers between weapons on my strength build. I noticed that sprinting heavies hit very hard at point blank with this weapon, well over double damage when compared to just the thrown projectile with the same attack. And then I really figured out what was going on when I was running the arcane build, because when I used the sprint heavy on one of the omens I was testing this stuff on, he got bled in one hit, which hadn't happened with any other weapon before, not even the ones that throw two projectiles. I'm pretty sure a double hit is what's going on here, because if we go frame by frame, you can see the stamina drain for both parts of the attack, separated by a single frame here, so technically not at the exact same time. It's one frame apart, but, you know, it might as well be. Overall, that is a very strong consideration for this weapon. It can be abused in PvE and PvP, though it may be a little harder to land on players, obviously. The one downside to this attack is, again, that it has a pretty massive stamina cost attached to it, so you definitely want to throw one of these out when you're closer to full in that regard. But yeah, that's pretty much all there is to say about this one. Again, the sprinting heavy, if you can land it, it will do a ton of damage and status buildup. I was super impressed with this discovery on this weapon. Very effective status buildup for PvE. The more you can hit something with it during the course of a fight, the better, and you'll outright bleed and freeze some normal enemies in one hit sometimes, depending on which build you run. But I also found the Sprinting Heavy to be useful in invasions. When you see a caster about to hit you with something, just toss a hammer their way and they'll get staggered out of it. And it comes out significantly faster than the standard heavy, so you can use it more reactionary. Just again, watch the stamina. Aside from the Sprinting Attack, decent Strength Scaling, and the Great Hammer moveset, I mean, what can I say? I highly recommend it. Quite strong. Speaking of anti-caster tools, let's talk about the shield. Unlike the rest of the weapons on this list, the Smith Script shield cannot be infused with Ashes of War, as its throne effect is its Ash of War. A bit strange since it can be upgraded to plus 25 with regular smithing stones, like a weapon that usually can be infused, so it's a, it's a bit of an odd duck. Either way, its Ash of War costs 3 FP, which is basically nothing. If you're a duelist in any form, I'm sure you've come across people who will spam this Ash of War, and even in Invasion since its FP cost is so low, a good player will have the timing down and know how to dodge the spam, but the animation time is so fast, and coupled in with its low FP cost and good tracking, it makes it a very strong tool against players overall. Again, try your best not to spam it, I mean, sometimes that'll work even though it's super annoying for your opponent and kind of a time waster if they know how to dodge it, but really I found it best used as like a supplement to some of the other weapons I was using. Like if I had just gotten a couple of good hits in with a hammer and I see my opponent getting out of range, I might use the shield a few times just to keep the pressure up, or if they're low enough to try and finish them off outright. Oh, and it's important to note that this also has a melee component to it, so you can hit people for a bit more damage if you hit them with the melee and the ranged part. It's not double damage, but it is significantly higher. And obviously, as I mentioned earlier, it's a great anti-caster tool because of the stagger and speed at which this comes out. The stagger attached to this Ash of War is kind of insane. It's like your opponent's poise doesn't matter. I think that's one of the bigger complaints with this weapon, and uh, I don't know, it might it might kind of be justified, honestly. Outside of duels, it's also a strong choice in invasions. Again, a strong ranged option is always something you want on hand, and this actually does a significant amount of damage. I've been able to snipe some hosts who are trying to get away with this thing, and again, interrupt spellcasters, pressure people one by one, etc. And PvE, unsurprisingly, also a strong option. It is amazing for progressing through dungeons overall, but also to fill in the gaps in boss fights if they happen to be dodgy or like to hop around a lot, like Gaius or Alana. You can just hit them with a quick shield toss or two while you are waiting for another opportunity to hit them with your weapon, especially if Frostbite is applied. I really liked using this and getting some extra damage out of it when freezing a boss or a player with a great hammer. So yeah, this is actually, and perhaps expectedly, another one of the best Smith Script weapons on the list, and I wouldn't be surprised if the devs rebalance this one a bit, maybe increasing the FP cost or adjusting the animation time or stagger, but until then guys, I mean, use this one. It's not an exploit or anything, it's a super strong ranged option at the moment, J just don't be a dirty spammer if you can help it. Alright, so we started strong with the first two weapons on this list, and the spear ain't bad. 
but it ain't that good either. I'll start with the most disappointing aspect, the throw. I thought of all the weapons, surely the spear must be a strong throwing weapon, right? People have been throwing javelins and spears since the beginning of time or something. Well, nope. I don't know why FromSoft hit this one so hard with the damage falloff, but this weapon's various strong attacks, the standard and sprinting ones, have some great range, but hit for barely anything if you try to capitalize on that. Seriously, like double digits in damage when hitting near max range. I understand the need for falloff on these weapons to prevent them from being too strong, but as it stands you basically have to hit someone just outside of melee range with the throw for it to do any meaningful damage. Again, it does maintain the same status buildup of a melee hit even when throwing at maximum distance, does thrust damage so it does benefit from the thrust damage counterattack boost, and this is one of the three weapons you can throw on horseback so there is all that as far as positives go. But even still, this throw felt like one of the weakest overall because of that harsh damage falloff and also the animation time for the throw is quite long so the status buildup felt like it took more time since it would decay between attacks. Either way, definitely only consider the throws on this one for the status buildup at max range in my opinion, if nothing else. Other than that, the standard spear moveset, I found myself not using the throw as much on this weapon but every now and then you can catch someone off guard. The damage in melee isn't very impressive so it's best to use this purely as a status effect applier and in that regard it isn't too bad. In PvP I was at least able to roll catch people with a repeating thrust ash of war to apply frost instantly after a swing from the axe or otherwise, but other than that I'd be switching out of this one pretty quickly whenever I had the chance. I didn't use this one much in invasions as well, if I wanted to harass at a range I just felt like there were better options like the shield, though again based on your ash of war choice you might be able to find some more use out of this thing. Repeating thrust, impaling thrust, hell even giants hunt, I don't know, any of your favorite piercing ashes of war, throw on this thing, because that's all it's basically used for. Maybe if you power stance two of these and make them blood infused they might be better but I don't know overall I was unimpressed moving on All right, next up we have the Smithscript Axe. Overall, this is in a similar category to the Spear, a bit lacking, but I think this one is a bit better since its scaling is pretty decent. You can get some pretty good AR from this thing on a heavy infusion, or even a keen infusion, honestly, especially for a one-hander. However, once again, the damage falloff from throwing this weapon is totally insane. Not only is it shorter range than the Spear, but the damage variance and distance made it very hard to record consistent throw numbers. Again, strange choice, but for optimal damage, you basically have to be close to point blank, and after a certain range, the damage falloff is so high, you're essentially just throwing throwing a stick at your target. The, you know, the axe blade might as well not be there. Ironically, though, I ended up comboing this with the spear for some moderate success in Arena. There isn't a true combo like the hand axe offhand, but it still felt pretty good as one. And you can bait people into roll catches after hitting them with a light attack as long as you have the right Ash of War to follow up, like impaling thrust or repeating thrust. Overall, though, another unimpressive Smith script weapon as far as the throwing aspect goes, though it does hit pretty hard in melee. I mean, hey, if you want to make a Kratos cosplay and throw this axe around, by all means, go ahead. Just, uh, you know, just don't expect a lot of damage. Boy. Next up is the Smithscript Dagger. So unlike the other weapons on this list, the Smithscript Dagger's attacks are all purely throwing attacks, whether it's a light attack or a strong attack. When one-handing these things, you only throw one dagger, but while two-handing, you throw two with each attack, and I found myself mostly using the dual-wield throwing attacks if I was using this weapon. But it's also a decent offhand just to keep pressure up on something by throwing a few daggers real quick or to pop a bubble on a player. Initially, I thought this would be ideal for a status build-up weapon, seeing the speed at which you throw and the fact that you throw two daggers each attack when dual-wielding, but the status build-up was surprisingly bad, I think in the 30s or 40s, and honestly took forever to get a bleed or frost proc on the omens even. The status buildup is a bit better with scattershot throw obviously, which is the Ash of War I ended up running on it, but even then I felt like some of the other weapons had better buildup even without using their ashes. However, the thing I was impressed with this weapon was the physical damage scaling. It gets an S in dexterity, but an A in strength scaling as well, honestly making it a decent source of physical damage. On top of that, it is pierce and thrust damage, so it benefits from that counterattack bonus on top of being able to headshot enemies. I'm not sure if this multiplier stacks, but I noticed you can get some pretty consistent headshots on these omens with jump attacks, and the jump strong attacks seem to be the best source of damage when running with these. So honestly, not a bad paired weapon to run on some dexterity-focused, agile build. One minor criticism, at least for me, is the range. It feels like the range should just be like a foot or two longer. It feels pretty short overall, to be honest, but it is just long enough to give you what feels like a ranged benefit. It actually feels the best out of all the thrown weapons on a horseback too, in my opinion, so there's that at least. But overall, I expected this weapon to have more effective range, but at least it doesn't suffer severe damage falloff like some of the others on this list. 
All right, y'all, we saved the best for last, the Smith Script Cert. I don't know how many of you have been using this weapon, but I'm sure a bunch of you have used other backhand blades, which is such a strong weapon class on moveset alone, and this is one of them. Obviously, the strong attacks have been replaced with throws here, which don't have a ton of range similar to the daggers. However, there's no damage fall off, and most importantly, they heat seek your target. If you're in range, there's a big chance they're going to hit your target unless they move quickly or roll at the right time. Super strong sprint throws, jump throws, standard throws, etc. Either single-handed or dual-wielded, by the way, but you should obviously be dual-wielding these as much as possible. The tracking on some of these throws is insane. I've thrown them in the opposite direction of a target, and they 180 around me and hit them anyways. Aside from getting more damage out of dual-wielding, the status buildup on these things feels up there with the Great Hammer. It has the same status buildup number as the Hand Axe and Spear, However, since each throw is two projectiles, you are getting double per throw compared to those weapons. The status buildup for both Frost and Bleed felt great, especially on the Arcane build. Definitely very strong option against players and great for PvE. Actually just as good as the dagger on horseback since it has good tracking, even if it is shorter range. And depending on the Ash of War you choose, you can sort of combo status buildup from a thrown attack on players. Uh, I would often open with a jump attack into a swift slash depending on my target, and this would honestly bleed players very quickly. I think the only downside with these weapons is that they deal essentially no poise damage. Like, you're not going to be stance breaking anything with these weapons in PvE, so that's something to keep in mind. Aside from that, the backhand blade's moveset is just crazy. Quick double swings for light attacks, the sprinting light attack is just insane. Insane for roll catching and staying on your targets while doing so. The crouch attack comes out quick and feels like it has some lasting frames while dishing out a double hit. Overall, I think this one is the shining star of the Smith Script weapons. So with that, I guess I'll just throw up the tier list of what I think the best Smith Script weapons are. The Cirque is just by far the strongest and most viable as a main weapon out of them all. But the shield and the Great Hammer are very strong as well. Totally worth a dedicated build, though you'll probably want to run something alongside the shield. The dagger is honestly not too bad either, which is why it's in high B tier. But again, the status buildup and the range are kind rough to me, but I don't doubt that someone can pump up the damage on these things into something very impressive, I bet. Maybe stacking the Claw Talisman, Spear Talisman, Smithing Talisman, Rotten Wing Sword Insignia, perhaps? There's definitely potential here. I don't think it's a bad weapon by any means. Unfortunately, I do think the Spear and the Axe rank the lowest here, just because they don't bring much to the table compared to these other Smith Script weapons. Status buildup and attack rating is just okay on the Axe, status buildup and attack rating on the Spear isn't great, and the throwing portion of these weapons is pretty much only useful in near melee range, so it's a wonder why you'd throw them at all. A few positives, I mean, the axe does get some decent attack rating when infused with heavy, and the spear gets access to some pretty strong piercing weapon ashes of war, but you could always use better weapons in the same class that'll deal more damage, have looser stat requirements, etc. Yeah, it just seems like these two weapons don't have much of a role to fill compared to the others. So those are the weapons for you guys, let's look at the builds. Alright, so for those of you interested in running the meme, here it is. Again, this thing's biggest weakness is low damage absorption and low poise, but you have a lot of different Ashes of War to soft swap to to try and catch your opponents off guard or if you just want to have a bunch of different options available to you as you progress through the base game or DLC. I do think the high strength build worked the best as far as getting the most damage out of every weapon across the board, though I think I'd avoid blood affinities just because cold affinities scale with the weapon level and don't care about stats. The only weapon I'd slap blood affinity on on this build is the Cirque. That thing just seems to build up whatever you put on it effectively. But yeah, other than that, just slap cold affinity on weapons you want to use to apply frostbite, but you will get the most physical damage out of a heavy infused Smith Script hammer and the heavy Smith Script Cirque with this build. Build. Honestly, aside from prioritizing the Cirque and Great Hammer, I think the different Ashes of War are what make this particular build so hilarious and semi-viable. Just gather up some of the most powerful ones you can think of, you know, just Waves of Darkness or Horolu's Earthshaker on the Great Hammer for invasions, though I really wish you could throw Flaming Strike on that one. I'm not sure why you can't. But yeah, Swift Slash or Blind Spot on the Cirque, Impaling or Repeating Thrust on maybe Blood Tax on the Spear, something like Stormcaller on the Frost-Infused Axe. Just literally become a Walking Ash of War collection that you can soft swap to at at any moment for any situation, and that's honestly kind of fun. However, I do genuinely think that the 50 Arcane and Strength build with the 6 weapons infused with bleed is stronger than the pure strength one. Obviously, your per hit physical damage is a little lower, but your bleed rate is honestly off the charts, and it feels super strong for both PvE and PvP, so honestly, though having all 6 weapons equipped is stupid, infusing them all with bleed makes this actually make some sense, since you can build it up with almost everything you use, including all of their throws. This does limit your Ash of War selection a little bit, but Honestly, it's kind of worth it with how often you'll be bleeding everything. Alright, memes aside, here are the real versions of the builds I ended up running with the most success. It was a heavy strength build, big surprise, but with a good chunk of points into endurance so we can wear the solitude set, save for the helmet, still a bird, and a few points into faith for the usual buffs, you know, flame grant me strength, bestial vitality, etc. 
I ended up running the top three weapons we've talked about here, the Smith Script Shield, the Smith Script Great Hammer, and the Smith Script Cirque, all in the same build. Obviously, you have a ton of strong ranged capability, and I honestly found the most success running the Great Hammer Frost Infused and the Cirque Bleed Infused. If you want, you could also give the Cirque the Cold Affinity and give the Great Hammer Heavy Affinity for big, big strike damage, further amplified by Frostbite. Totally a viable option, particularly useful for enhancing the shield's Ash of War damage against players and PvE alike. In duels, I would aim to inflict Frostbite as quickly as possible with the hammer, then aggress with whatever felt appropriate given the situation. If they were up close, the Great Hammer, if they were trying to run away or play defensively, I'd use the Cirk or throw a couple shields at him. This was an effective, if not annoying, tactic, but again, I avoided spamming the shield only. It felt more effective to switch it up and use the Great Hammer and the Cirk as much as possible alongside it. In invasions, I would slap an invasion favorable Ash of War on the Great Hammer like Waves of Darkness, which actually builds up Frost with the Cold Great Hammer, so that made it feel extra strong to me. But yeah, I mostly use the Great Hammer if being aggressed by multiple players and would switch the Cirk for solo chase downs. The Swift Slash was decent against groups as well, and sometimes I would just throw the shield to finish off players as well, etc. Again, you just have a bunch of options available to you, so it's basically up to you to choose what makes the most sense given the situation. Alright, there's one last build I'll mention because even though I'm a strength addict, the Smith Script Cirque is so strong you could totally just lean into the strengths of that weapon with a pure dex or arcane dexterity build, as long as you're used to PvE without stance breaking. I really do think it's the best Smith Script weapon as it has a great combination of status buildup, damage, and range that, though it's short, actually hits hard and is effective at landing on your targets consistently. Honestly, I think I saw the most success using this thing alone as a 50 arcane and dexterity build, but again, you could totally just hit the 80 dex cap and hit really hard with this thing with high attack rating. Super strong weapon. Was really surprised by this one as a strength main, and I mean, I gotta give it up. It's great, and you'll definitely get the most out of it with some kind of, like, dedicated dexterity build. Real quick, talisman choices. For the Rexasha six weapons build, the three that basically never moved were the Shard of Alexander. I mean, makes sense since you're using so many Ashes of War here. Erdtree's Favor plus two, and the Smithing Talisman. You'll be throwing things all the time, so it's nice to get that damage boost from that one. However, the last spot is Flex. Sometimes I'd throw on Bulgos for some poise, usually for PvP purposes, but even with this on, you're not going to have a ton of poise, so you don't want to attempt too many trades with this build. But I'd also go with Lord of Blood's Exultation while running the Bleed version, since you'll be bleeding things all the time. It's it's uh, you know nice to get that 20% attack power bonus, and even though it's reduced to 12% bonus in PvP, that's still pretty significant. And since you bleed things all the time, it's basically free. For the non-meme version, versions of the build, honestly the talisman choices were pretty much the same. If you go with the Smith Script Cirque dedicated build, however, I could see the Rotten Winged Sword insignia being of more use since, you know, many attacks are successive, but do note that this does not proc off of the throws, it's only off of the melee attacks. One other point here, I'd throw on the Curved Sword Talisman in the flex spot and replace the Shard of Alexander with the Dagger Talisman for certain boss fights that were extra susceptible to guard counters, like Gaius or Rolana. That tried and true combo of the Deflecting Hard tier and the Stone Barb Cracked tier would do so much work with the Great Hammer, but I didn't even two-hand it because for some reason the block timing was weird to me and I kept getting messed up. I just used this Miscript Shield for the spontaneous blocks and the one-handed Great Hammer guard counters and it worked wonderfully. I just switched to two-handed before going in for the crit and you can deal just so much damage to bosses this way. I'll quickly go over the physics I used here as well. As I mentioned, I used the Stone Barb Cracked tier and the Deflecting Hard tier for PvE, especially boss fights again. It's super useful and pretty easy to get the deflects down with the blocking animation of the Smith Script Shield. Definitely try it out and let me know what you think. Other than that though, for invasions, I'd go with Old Reliable, the Crimson Bubble tier, and if I was running the meme build, I'd go with the Leaden Hard tier for the extra poise. However, I could see the Thorny Cracked tier being good with the Cirques especially, basically Rotten Winged Sword Insignia and Crystal tier form, and also just the Opaline Bubble tier to take another extra hit, another classic one, and yeah, that's pretty much all the options I switched between. Oh, I realize I've also been skipping over great rune choices, which I don't use that often. Um, I mean, honestly, just Godric's or Radon's. I mean, more stats are always good, I guess. I mean, those are what I'd choose off the cuff, but I don't know. Just use whatever you want, guys. That's all I got. So that's pretty much the video, guys. The Smith Script weapons overall are very interesting, but those three that we went over are just, like, so much stronger than the other ones. You know, the, the Great Hammer and the Shield are very good for strength builds all around, and the Cirque is really strong with either a strength or dexterity build, to be honest. It's a bit unfortunate that all the other weapons suffer so hard from throw damage fall off. I honestly don't think they would even be that overpowered if the fall off was completely removed or if it was just greatly lessened, uh, because the projectiles aren't very hard to avoid anyway. Way. Overall though, some pretty interesting interactions with status buildup, especially with the Great Hammer and the Cirk. It's pretty easy to get bleeds to pop off with a 50 arcane build with both of those weapons. So definitely try those out, but if you want something a little more well-rounded, I would suggest the strength build. Uh, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video, and uh, hopefully you learned something about the way these weapons work. But for now, that's going to be it. Till next time.